guys, I'm Sherry Kamaji today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Hopefully it finds you all doing well. I am doing fantastic. Not only is this going to be an amazing video, I guarantee it. Personal stamp of approval here at the beginning. Uh, but also, I'm just I'm just feeling the weather outside. Took my son to a water park. Got a little sunburn. I don't know. Can you guys see the sunburn? And she was so damn sexy. You were hot. Eh, it's tough to see. It's tough to see. I'm one of those weirdos. I've mentioned this on the channel before, and, and most of you, like 99% of you, freak out but I'm one of those weirdos in the world that I prefer cold weather I like the rain I like dark vibes it's very weird but it actually puts me in a good mood but the exception is the first like month or so of the warm weather seasons uh, I love it I love going out with the kiddo and just enjoying uh, ourselves so anyway hopefully you guys had a great weekend holiday weekend Happy Memorial Day belated to all of those in the estates as well today we have the most just insane godlike free to play account that I have ever seen in my life. Have you guys, you guys be the judge, right? Have you ever seen a free to play account better than this? And I have a personal, very personal connection with this player. It is Sir Henry, AKA Henrique. Now he's my thumbnail artist. You may have noticed about a year ago, the thumbnail quality has vastly improved on my channel. Shout out to Chosen for connecting us. And you know what? A year or so or more, like my editor Osama, we've been working together for like four years or something like that. You start to really cultivate and develop a friendship with these uh, with these people that you talk to every day, right? So me and Henrique, I knew he was a raid player as well. It's really nice to have a player and a designer. It's, it's much easier to kind of convey what I want out of a thumbnail. And he's like, I always knew he's a player and I knew he's free to play. But then he started sharing me like some of his teams. He's working on some champion builds. I'm like, dude. You have a sick account, bro. And not only do I want to just showcase the account today, like that's all cool to take a look at everything, but I also really wanted his tips, his learnings. How did he get this far without spending? How does he enjoy the game? Like, I, I want to know everything. So he answered all those questions. I want to share it with you guys as well. But when I first logged into his account, I noticed this offer, the Warrior Circle Pack. Ooh. <laughs> So I think there's like three different versions, Warrior Circle 1, 2, and 3. And these are the best offers in Raid Shadow Legends, except for like the occasional random, uh, you know, uh, this fourth anniversary special or whatever. These are the best offers. And they only go to non-spenders or people who haven't spent in a long time, like the most enticing stuff. And I said, like I said, there's a few different versions of this, but this one's like nine ancients, uh, four voids and 800 shards for whatever 1199 euro would be, uh, but not around 10 bucks or so, 10, $15. I mean, whoa, whoa, you see all the juicy offers on the free to play accounts, man. I'm not even sorry. 11.2 million player power on Hen on Henrique. Uh, he has been playing this year of uh, this game, excuse me, for over around two and a half years. And the progress that he's made has been truly just remarkable. So anyway, I don't even know where to start, but you know where I could start? I asked him what he's most proud of on this account. And he started by pointing out a few dungeon teams. Let's just go ahead and start there. Then I'll share all his champions and all his tips and his clan boss team, which he is especially proud of. I think that's the thing he's he talks about the most, Henrique. So let's start with Spider's Den, right? He has a Spider 10, 100, uh, Spider 10 hard, excuse me, 100% win rate team here. And let's see what he came up with. Okay, so he's got the uh, Duchess, he's got Lydia, he's got Kaimar and double Royal Guard here, double Royal Guard. Let's go ahead and see what he can do. He said this is around a 30 second, 100% success team. So let's see, and I'm going to show you all the builds on all these champions too for each of these dungeons. Some of the uh, the downtime I'll cut out for you guys, depending on where we're going to go here. Uh, I also wanted to get information on, okay, oh, look at that, man. Royal, the back-to-back -back Royal Guard takedown, that second one just hits hard. And then we're just going to reset and do it all over again, nice and easy. 30 seconds, not too shabby at all, right? And it's funny, you know, again, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about this as the video goes on. But just how much the game opens up once you start getting Lydia, once you start getting Mithrala, once you basically enter the end game, especially as a, I don't know what to sell here on this account, but I'm assuming he's gonna sell that 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 pretty crappy amulet. Uh, but once you get those champions, and I'll, I'll tell you his fusion philosophy and all that stuff as well. Uh, really quickly here, let me go and show you Sand Devil. He is. That was like the Nogdar cheating <laughs> with the bug, I should say. Right now on his account, he's only farming earlier stages. He is uh, farming right now, uh, Sand Devil 14. 
He's doing 14 and he's doing it with Walking Tomb Drain, okay? Uh, on Fire Knight, just to show you progression here, he is, he's cleared, I think, five stages. Four stages, he's on five of Fire Knight hard, but I asked him where he does all his farming. He does it in stage 25. He does it in stage 25 with this team, Ronda, Yameko. He has one Yameko, one Kymar, which is obviously massive, massive uh, benefits for this account or for any account, uh, let alone a free-to-play account. But again, you play for a couple years, you're going to get lucky with a few pulls, and then you're going to have all the good fusions and fragment summons if you play your cards right, which again, I'll get to his strategy there in just a moment here. But first, he's really proud of his Dragon Lair team. So check this out, Dragon 10, Really quickly, let me show you the uh, the builds on the spider team. Then we'll look at his champion collection. We'll give the tips. Actually, we'll do clan boss and give the tips at the same time. And then I'll cut and come back to you. I also want to show the Hydra teams. I want to show you everything, guys. We have Lydia. Lydia looks to be in an immunity set here. He has Lydia in immunity with 256 speed, uh, 509 accuracy. He has Duchess. Duchess is, I asked him who he's most proud of on his account in terms of the builds, and he said Nekmothar, Duchess, and Mithrala. So Duchess he has at 581 resistance, 242 speed, and pretty tanky. Not too bad at all in a stone skin in a resilient set. So on Kaimar, he has a fortitude perception resistance. We have a very high resist build, 624, 258 on the speed. Really, really nice there on Kaimar. Accuracy only 237. Uh, let's see, masteries. Some of his champions have masteries, others don't. I assume he's just doing masteries based on what he absolutely needs versus what he can get by with without having to farm them up, right? Uh, Royal Guard, both with masteries here for the most part. Uh, both Royal Guards are built very similarly. Uh, close to 100%, 257, don't care about attack, a little bit of survivability, uh, and that's pretty much it. Same thing on this one, right? 112, 241, 227 there as well. Exactly how you ought to be building Royal Guard. He has lethal perception on one, and he has double perception on on the other. Let me go ahead and show you really quickly his stage 10 hard uh, dragon team here. So obviously it's a seer activation team. We're going to quickly get by these runs. We're going to deflect some of the poisons back to the dragon as well with Yumeko. Uh, noteworthy that I mentioned this before, if you have Staltus Dragon Bane, oh my god, he is like the most insane dragon hard, just one, not, not one shot, but like one stop shop there we go one stop shop in the game in terms of deflecting all of those poisons right back on the dragon it makes for a really quick run speaking of really really quick runs look at all of those uh poisons going back onto the dragon there so this is about gosh this is going to be a really fast run too really impressed with out the gate how he's not wasting resources here. He's using some unorthodox artifact sets here and there when he has them, albeit strong ones. Uh, and then he's just going, keeping it simple, right? On some of his artifact sets as well. Just going triple perception where it makes sense, double perception where it makes sense. Uh, and you can see here, this team is, is rock solid, right? Rock solid. We get the cleanse, Mithrala. We get the double cleanse, Bad Alcazar. And then we get the deflect or reflect those poisons. Deflect, reflect, tomato, tomato, right? Reflect, deflect. I would say deflect. We deflected those poisons right back on the dragon and we take down the toxic dragon right now. Look at that. 120 best time, 50 seconds. Not bad, great team. Bad Alcazar, uh, a million damage. And you, well, you guys can see the rest here. Very, very nice. Let's see, speed with speed. I'm assuming he's gonna keep it and at least roll it up. So we'll keep that artifact here. All right, let's, let me show you his champion collection really quickly here. Warrior Circle. <gasps> Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. It's not for you. Faction Wars, obviously he's completed everything, right? Cause he has Lydia. So hats off to you there. Uh, we have his arena main team. Let me just take a look-see here. Why? I don't know why I refreshed, but whatever. Let me just show you all his champions really quickly here. He's running a Nuker Valkyrie build here, as you can see. He has pretty low in the accuracy, 230, sacrificing accuracy for 150 and a decent amount of defense as well. He has Ethos. He has Vizix, who he clearly doesn't really use anymore, right? A lot of gear muling around. Uh, porting around, if you will. We have Ninja, obviously been playing since Ninja. Uh, Rodos, gotta love it. Doesn't have Siffy, really wanted Siffy. He saved up all his shards on that last uh, 10X event. 
trying to get Siffy and he didn't get her. Uh, but he gets a Rodos. He has a Duchess. Yameko, who you've already seen. And then for the most part here, he has, and this is why this game is, is really cool. Like, if you have the tenacity, the fortitude to just stay strong and not buy the Warrior Circle packs or anything for that matter, this game really does give you a ton of just really good stuff. For example, he sent me the screenshot. Do I still have it handy? He sent me the screenshot. He pulled the Valkyrie Six Star Awakened. He pulled it right out of a uh, the, the crappy shards there, right, right over here. Boom. Valkyrie, right out of the Mortal Soul Stone. How about that, huh? So he shared that screenshot with me and I'm like, dude, <laughs> I mean, so you're going to get lucky every so often, right? Even as a free-to-play player, which is nice. Obviously, Lydia is somebody that you can get just through, you know, playing the game. Uh, and then he he strategically goes for fusions, right? So he went for Pytheon. He went for Nishak. He went for Mighty Uko. He went for, obviously, he got Cronum. I don't have Cronum. He got Cronum, right? Man, it must be nice to have friends. Uh, Razzlevarg, he, he got Razzlevarg. He got Walking Tomb Dragon. So these are champions, Helicath, that he strategically just went for. He got Ramatu. That's also one of his most proud builds. Another champion that I need to get. Uh, 721 on the accuracy. So it's a debuffer build of Ramen 2 Drace Blood. He loves this build. 265 on the speed. That's really nice with a triple perception uh, set on him. And then, well, you guys can see the rest. UDKs of the world. He has a Sissia. He has a Michinaki, a Ronda, uh, Hefrak, Brogni, Silva Drakes. He has two Kaimars. Very, very nice there. And then, oh, does he have two Duchesses? He has two duchesses congratulations sir henry all right so this is the entire squad here he has uh samson the masher i don't have samson the masher i want samson the masher and then you can see here he has so i don't know man like that's a quite a bit like 70 or so legendaries give or take and then he has obviously seer or Kemptum. he has all the good uh epics for the most part here uh i mentioned that his necmo thar is one of his favorite builds on the account and look at this man it's a pretty fast 238, 436 on the resistance, no damage or anything built into it. I have mine kind of in relentless and min-maxed. I just put out a guide on the Champion Guide channel, which we just hit 15,000 subscribers. Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guides. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. So I shared my build on Nekmothar, which I love, but I love the idea of putting this little bug in a Provoke set, right? So he said in the Provoke set, Nekmothar is able to just control everything because of the, well, the extra turn that leads into more AoEs, AoEs. So we're getting a chance of provoking every single time we go with Nekmothar. So I thought that was a really fun and kind of unorthodox build. You can see a no masteries on Nekmothar. He does have him booked out though i wonder if he has if he has all of his champions booked out sometimes obviously he doesn't you know he got hailburn all the way booked out here and then he didn't see the need obviously to book out the a1 and the a3 uh, of ninja nice to all the books except for one went to that a2 there right so strategically using his skill tomes which are probably the most difficult thing to come by inside this game so he has polymorph six star on Valkyrie, by the way. Let me show you his Hydra teams and let me give you all his tips. So clan boss, Hydra. So he goes for brutal, hard, and normal. He does exactly what you're supposed to do. He uses his best team at the most difficult difficulty, the hardest difficulty, there we go. And then he just kind of goes, you know, to second best team to the next one and so on and so forth. So here he goes, 34 million on brutal is a one key right you get the guardian chest sign me up uh so let's take a look at his squad this is his best hydra team nekmothar we talked about it in the lead in that beautiful provoke set and then he has uh crit damage and reflex on husk shutting off the a3 and then he has michinaki with a relentless and perception then he has Elva in Regeneration and Immortal. He has Ugo in Reflex and Perception. And then Inquisitor Shamil. And Inquisitor Shamil, all that turn meter boost is going to go right to Mr. Nekmothar. And you can see his clanmates also running Nekmothar and Husk. Uh, at least one of them in those uh, top two spots. On the hard team, he has Cronum, Walking Tomb Drang, Husk, Mighty Uko, Duchess, and Geo and Relentless. Uh, Duchess, we already looked at her build. We have Immortal in a stun set and Mighty Uko. Stun set, obviously, for uh, the arena. Savage on Husk. Walking Tomb Drang in Immortal and Regen. And Cronum in Two Perception and Immortal. 
And then again, that is a 21 million. And that is, I should know this. It's 20.4 to get a one key there. And then his normal team, last but not least, is going to be Duchess, number two. Lydia, Yumeko, Arbiter, Trunda, Umbral, Enchantress. Umbral is in speed, one stone skin. We have Trunda in savage. We have Arbiter, double speed, divine speed. Yumeko, perception and accuracy. Lydia, perception, immunity. And Duchess in... uh. And what stone uh, protection and stone skin there so those are all his hydra clan boss teams guys let me give you his tips all right henrique says started playing this game because of ads really let's play raid shadow Legends. So did a lot of us, right? It's my first game of this genre. I've been playing for over two years now. I had a four-month interruption because of a thing called life, right? Uh, proud Papa is uh, Sir Henry uh, White. Uh, major tips. So we all know, he says, we all know the obvious tips. Resource efficient, double dipping on events and tournaments, etc. right? We've gone over that quite that stuff quite a bit, uh, which is really important to double dip inside of events and tournaments. Can't be overstated enough. Think of this game as a fun hobby, not an obligation. Great advice there, right? Isn't that so true? So true. This is a personal game. Unless you're playing for Top End Arena, it's all for your account. Stop being so focused on other people's accounts. Always someone bigger and better. Ain't that the truth too? You can see that Henrik is very wise, right? And this is great advice, seriously. Uh, once you get your account to late game, which is, he defines as Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss, uh, Doom Tower Hard, Lydia, and maybe Ramen 2, start off having fun with off-meta champs. Start having fun with, uh, with off-meta champs. Save resources for fusion every time. Then decide if you want to go for it. This is good advice too, right? He's not saying go for every fusion, and he's not saying, you know, skip half fusions or whatever. He's saying always save as if you're going to go for it and then make the decision, you know, the week before or whatever, right? After you see maybe some showcases out there, after you see what the champion actually is, but he's always saving for it. And you can see that strategy has worked well because did you notice that he has like all the good fusions and some of those really crappy fusions he didn't have at all? It makes sense, right? Revelations. I asked him if you had any revelations in your journey as a free to play. In the beginning, you really need to focus on one champ only grind, right? Until late game, two times uh, shard shards, and then late game and after, 10 times. I mentioned that he went after Siffy. I don't know, that, listen, I'm not a free to play player, but I don't know if that's how I would personally handle uh, shards as a free to play. But then again, he's so end game as a free to play too, right? So I guess it does make sense if you really want a certain champion, but I've been burned so many freaking times by 10 times that I think that's the only little bit of advice that I may disagree with. I may just say, nah, two times or guaranteed champions. Uh, but, you know, that's his advice and we'll respect it. Uh, Doom Tower is underrated. Oh, I love this one. I made a calculated guess on prize value and it's over $200 every rotation worth of prizes. I do Doom Tower both hard and normal every single rotation. I've never skipped it because of exactly that. I mean, all the stuff that you get, I don't know why. Some people are just like, yeah, I don't, even a lot of content creators are just like, I don't do Doom Tower. Why? There's so many resources there. Not to mention, obviously, the amazing Forge material. Not to mention, well, uh, champion fragments for really solid champions as well. Anyway, I agree. You don't need meta chance to have fun. So true. Faction Wars is so important. Obviously, getting your hands on not only the all the amazing glyphs, but, but Lydia eventually. If you want, you can really have fun with a Lydia grind. Ramen 2 is just time gated thing. Not fun at all, he says. <laughs> Fair enough. I can I hear that. I hear that. On endgame, Doom Tower gear is better than dungeons. Interesting stuff. I agree with the exception of Fire Knight, because I love my regen. I love my Savage. It, granted, though, you can still make the case that there's better options out there of those gears through either the Forge Pass or Doom Tower. So great note there. Another reason to focus on Doom Tower, right? How do I spend my resources? You can see I go down. This is perfect. Buckle up, baby. Are you kidding me? Save for every fusion. Uh, but only do fusions that are something you don't have. And that's a great way of putting it. It's easy to say, only do good fusions. Blah. It's better to say, go for a fusion with a for a champion whose skill set will complement your account. As he said earlier, 
You are playing for yourself. Don't compare yourself to others and think about it in that context. Energy over gems for masteries. Uh, basically, he's not paying gems for masteries. Uh, only exception there, I would say, is maybe your first champion if you want to. Uh, and then spend gem he, he spends gems only on energy and iron twins. Interesting that he said iron twins there. An area where I woefully neglect inside the game. What about you guys? But it's a it's a good point, you know. Get that's he did pull the six uh, the six uh, star awakened uh, Valkyrie, so uh, it's working out well for him there. So those are all his tips, guys. Uh, I will share too, really quickly, the things that he's most proud of. Right, clan boss team number one. Uh, my own speed tomb is a proud moment. We'll we'll take a look at that team before we let you guys go. Uh, Doom Tower hard every floor. Spider hard. Dragon hard. Fast potion. Ethos nightmare farm in six seconds. Uh, safe but not fast. Iron twins uh, comp. Good Bommel concept team and good Nether Spider concept team. Let me pull that up really quickly here because we have a new Do Doom Tower rotation at the time of this recording. Dark Fae. He's using this squad. I like to see uh, my man Skimfos to consume there. That's really cool. Then he has Allure, Deke, uh, Coltar. Uh, let's see. I want to see this Bommel team. It's only floor 10, but it's a double. Look at this, man. I like this. It is Yumeko for that A2 to send those bombs back on Destiny's Mirror. And then he has a double Volgoth. And then he has Geo. And then Godseeker and Neri. I like that squad. I really do. Uh, let me see if he has the team up. I'm not going to dig it out, but Nightmare ethos let's take a look at that because i know if i don't okay let's let's just show it right because i know if i don't show this stuff somebody in the comments is gonna be like dude ash how can you say that and not show it all right well i, I had it on off auto for a moment there but look at ethos do his thing okay okay oh i was worried there for a second Ooh, ethos he's on a tear uh oh uh, he's gonna get us killed Counterattack. get it oh man it's the curse of ash dude here we go again. One more try. One more try. You know he's gonna like message me and be like, Ash, you screwed up something, man. No, oh, he didn't have gear on the rares. That's why. That's why. <laughs> Let me show you this clan boss team without further ado, guys, because I know that's what a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Again, 100 milli. Let me show you Ultra Nightmare. Custom made, only one champion has ridiculous speed. So here we go. It's Razzlevarg at 189. Nothing changed in the presets. He has Demitha, uh, first choice A2, opener A, or second choice and opener A3, channel the bloodline, 295 speed there. So the biggest speed uh, factor on the team. We have Seeker opening up with the A1 at 189 speed. We have Jintaro at 175 speed. Nothing changed there. And then Under Priest Brogni opening up with Cavern's Grasp at a 190 speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a run and I'll be right back, guys. guys so dang 18 minutes and 50 seconds later we have brogni with 17 million jintaro with 36 seeker with 17 demitha with six and razzlevarg with 37 million and 114.7 million damage guys hopefully this uh this account highlight showcase if you will will give you some sort of inspiration if you're out there and you're not a big spender or you're free to play in raid shadow legends uh thank you so much for uh, to henrique excuse me for letting us use his account and showcase this team as well as the entire account as i mentioned deadwood jedi's website and or maybe a video coming up soon specifically breaking down this particular clan boss team guys send us a positive vibes and love your way today again if you need it thank you so much for watching until the end of the video and as always take care guys